Amen. Well, if that doesn't get you up and dancing around your living room, around your kitchen table, wherever you're at, I'd say your wood's all wet because there's some fire there. Amen. Man, that was awesome, group. That was awesome. Man, right now, we just want to welcome you here to Cathedral of Life online. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. Of course, uh, because of COVID circumstances, we are uh, coming to you broadcasting uh, here from the sanctuary. Uh, just like Sandy said, I want you to take a moment, go down, hit that share and like button, tag somebody uh, so that they can get online, they can watch with you, get your family together. Just because you're at home doesn't mean that you can't have church. Amen. So we've, uh, we're, we're glad to be bringing this to you right now. I just want to say thank you to everybody for your faithfulness and your giving. And, uh, you know, there's a number of ways that you can give your tithes and your offerings here to the church. Uh, you're welcome to continue to mail them in to 5375 Jaycox Road, North Ridgeville, Ohio, 44. 039 and I know we're getting them because I saw the envelopes when I came in tonight so you can use good old snail mail uh, you can get online go to our church webpage uh, it is www.colchurchlife.org and you can click on the give button up there at the top and follow the directions to set up your online giving and then of course there's uh what I think is the easiest way is just simply using text to give. And it's simply texting 84321 is the number. And then to that number, you're going to text whatever amount that you would like to give. And the word tithes. And once you do that, we'll receive it and you will be all set up to be able to give. I'm just a little bit excited this morning, especially this music. It's really, it's, I hope it's pumping you up like it's pumping us up here this morning. I'm excited about what God is bringing forth in the Word. I'm excited about the ministry that we have going on here. How many of you know that even in times when things are upside down, when they're abnormal, God still has a plan and still has a way? And at the beginning of the year, we declared that 2020 was a year of increase. And I'm telling you that God has continued to increase even in these difficult different times that we're living in. In fact, he's continued to allow us to do ministry. On Sunday nights, we have Clean Sober Saved is here. Uh, they're back to doing online at 7 p.m. It is an awesome group for support and recovery. You don't want to miss that. Tune in at 7 o'clock, either on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, but be here. Get somebody who needs help and be here for that. Every day, we have an ongoing prayer call from about noon to uh, or 1230 to about 1, 1 .15, And we want you to be a part of that. We want to invite you to join us just simply by calling in at 1-267-930-4000. You can put the uh, access code in 559-428-556. And if God leads you to pray or to intercede, or you have a need, we want you to be a part of that. And in fact, our prayer services on Wednesday night, which we've now been doing for several months, have become a very powerful time of prayer, uh, lifting those up that are in need of healing, uh, deliverance, and we're seeing God answer prayer. People are being saved, they're being healed, they're being delivered. They're coming off of being addicted for a long time, for years. And it's awesome to see God's hand at work in their lives. We want to see him moving in your life and leading you into the purpose for which you were called. Amen. And then we also have uh, our uh, Within Arms Reach ministry, which is meeting out in Grafton on Friday night. So we are here. I am excited to hear the word that Pastor uh, is bringing forth this morning. Uh, I think we're going to go into a little more worship just to get us going. But don't sit down wherever you're at. Get up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Let your neighbors all around you know that today you're worshiping the Lord. Amen? Come on, team.
circling high above me, but in the shadow of my fear, the fire of faith is stirring, growing inside of me, reminding me of something I already believe. My God is a mountain mover. My God's gonna make a way. Can't count all the time he's moving. We can't trust him, just have faith. Take a hopeless situation.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell somebody he knows my name. Type in the comments. He knows my name. Aren't you glad this morning that he knows your name? Aren't you glad you're saved? Jesus said to the disciples when they came back from casting out devils and said, even the devils are subject to us. Jesus said, don't rejoice about that, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. He knows your name. Hallelujah. Tell somebody he knows your name. Praise the Lord. What a, what a great job the worship team is doing. Praise the Lord. We're so glad to have Ryan with us, Lee with us, my brother Keith with us. We appreciate them so much. And Keith has to leave in just a moment. We're, we're so glad that he was able to join us for this broadcast. And I got a, I got a sermon that I am just absolutely excited about preaching this morning. And I'm believing that God is going to give some folks a second wind. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And I want the, uh, when Keith leaves, I want the band to stay close by. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We love you, church. This morning, we want you to turn in your Bibles to Acts 4, Acts 4, in the, starting with the 29th verse. And this is just uh, three verses that we're going to use in our text, but uh, we're going to use it two or three times throughout the message because it, it, it's going to absolutely amplify what we need to say this morning. The scripture says this, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. By stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. I want you to just point your hands toward me, those that are in the sanctuary right now, and those that are watching on social media. Father, I thank you so much for your blessings, for your grace, for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit, your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I know that I can't do anything without you. I can't live or move or breathe without you. But I know that with your Holy Spirit, we can see the miraculous take place. We can see miracles happen. We can see folks say those that are addicted can be set free in the name of Jesus, amen. <clears throat> this morning I want you to know that it doesn't matter who you are or how anointed you are. At some point in your life, you're going to need a second wind. Most of you hearing this word are no doubt familiar with Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. In this passage of Scripture, the Holy Spirit comes and fills 120 hungry hearts and tongues like fire come and set down on each and every head 
that were there praying in the upper room. The King James Version describes the Holy Spirit in that verse as a mighty rushing wind. An, uh, one translation describes him this way. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. This is when the church of the Lord Jesus Christ was empowered with supernatural power from on high. The power of the Holy Spirit came on them and in them. This power and this anointing came on them and sent them directly into the line of fire. Extreme spiritual warfare began to break out against them. This baby church, this infant church was thrust into the heat of the battle and they experienced great persecution. So by the time we get to this chapter, Acts chapter 4, that we just read to you, these disciples were pretty beat up. And they were beaten up pretty much, pretty good. But let me stop here just long enough to tell somebody, if you're going through what the early church went through, if you've been beaten up pretty good, if you've taken some hard knocks, if you've had the breath knocked out of you, I am prophesying to you this morning a brand new chapter. I'm saying don't quit. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. There's a fresh wind that's blowing. Tell somebody you got, you're getting ready to catch a second wind. Tell somebody, write it out in the comments, you're catching a second wind. Our text looks at this early church. <clears throat> and we see how they responded to their battles, how they responded to the warfare. The Bible says that they assembled together and they had prayer. So I want to look at that text again. Let's read it again. Lord, look at their threats. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And I love this part. When they prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness, sharing in all things. Hallelujah. You see what happened here? You see what happened? The disciples caught a second wind. The same wind, Pastor Todd, that blew in the upper room was back here two chapters later. And it was blowing again in chapter 4. Glory to God. Catching a second wind, that phrase, we've heard it all our lives, relates to a runner in a race. And it's often experienced by a runner who has run unto the point of exhaustion. And typically, most runners feel like their lungs are about to explode. And, and every muscle in their body is on fire. L leading them or telling them 
you may as well quit. But then they catch a second wind. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody type it out. I'm catching a second wind. Somebody say it today. I'm catching a second wind. All of a sudden, while they're running, out of nowhere, without any explanation, they get a sudden revitalization and energy and strength to keep running. It almost seems supernatural. Glory to God. In many cases, this second wind has pushed them right into the winner's circle, right into the championship. Sometimes scientists call this phenomenon the second wind. They say it's a result of the body finding the proper balance of oxygen to counteract the buildup of uh, lactic acid in the muscles. Others claim that it's due to endorphin production. Others believe it's psychological. But regardless of all the theories, there's no disputing the fact that it actually happens. The phenomenon has come to be used as a metaphor for new energy, new strength, when you get to the point of exhaustion. And I came this morning to declare that God is sending a second wind. God is sending a new chapter of anointing to His people. Many of God's people have reached the point of exhaustion. The Bible refers to, uh, to something in the, in the Bible. It refers to the spirit of the python. And I believe this spirit has attacked many believers and that the spirit is sent by the devil to steal the breath of God's people. From Genesis to Revelations, the devil is identified as a snake or a serpent. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Somebody shout, he's given me power over the devil. He's given me power over the serpent. You see, the devil's a serpent. He's a snake. And we see this snake in the spirit of the python. The python is known to grow as long as 30 feet and weigh up to 300 pounds. The python does not kill its victim by venom. The python kills its prey by coiling around its victim and constricting and squeezing them. Each time, the victim takes a breath and exhales, the python constricts and keeps doing this until the victim cannot breathe. The python literally suffocates the victim. It squeezes the life out of them. Many of God's children have been under the attack of the spirit of Python. The Bible says in the last days, the devil will speak great words against the Most High and he will wear out the saints of the Most High. Daniel 7.25, which is an end time prophecy, says this, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. The word 
in the Hebrew there for wear out means to afflict. It means to harass. It means to exhaust. It means to push, to faint, or to cause to be weary, or to apply continuous pressure or strain. Friend, members of this church, anybody watching right now on social media, many of you have been under attack and it's been continuous and it's been nonstop and there's been no relief and it's been one thing after the other. You've been under pressure physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually. Every time you get victory in one area, the devil hits you from another side. What's happening? It's the spirit of Python. He's trying to drive you to the point of exhaustion. He's trying to wear you out. He's trying to squeeze the very life, the very breath out of you. You see, breath is life, and breath is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. If you have life in you, excuse me, if you have no life in you, you are no threat to the devil. The valley of dry bones was no threat to the devil. But then God told Ezekiel to prophesy to them. And this is what he said. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. When the wind, the literal breath of God, the Holy Ghost begins to flow, a mighty army is going to stand up in these last days. Somebody praise him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give him glory. 120 discouraged disciples were in the upper room and they were no threat to the devil. But all of a sudden, Sandra, there was a rushing mighty wind that filled that place and filled them with the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, they were commissioned with tongues of fire and they turned the known world upside down. Somebody ought to praise him. So you start with the wind and then comes the fire. Hallelujah, the wind blows and then the fire comes. 300 foxes were no threat to the Philistines until Samson put them in pairs, tied them tail to tail, and set a firebrand between their tails, and then they became a weapon of mass destruction. They burned up the corn and the vineyards and the olives. That's what the devil is afraid of, the fire of God. Hallelujah. The devil is afraid of the fire of God. He's not afraid of our programs. He's not afraid of good singing. He's not afraid of our preaching. He's not afraid of our church attendance. He's not afraid of our talent. Even our knowledge of the Bible does not scare him. But what gives the devil nightmares and sends shockwaves through hell is a church on fire. 
Somebody shout, church on fire. Somebody declare, church on fire. When the pastors are on fire, when the worship team's on fire, when the musicians are on fire, when the ushers are on fire, when the greeters are on fire, when the outreach ministries are on fire, when the ladies' ministries, the men's ministries are on fire, when the youth ministries are on fire, when the clean, sober, saved team is on fire, when the cameramen are on fire, when the musicians are on fire, hallelujah, when the sound man is on fire, who, oh, hallelujah, when the, even the financial team is on fire, when the cleaners who clean the church are on fire, hallelujah, glory to God, when the members of this church are on fire, the devil cannot stand a church on fire. Somebody shout fire. Come on this morning. Somebody type it in fire. Somebody shout fire. Somebody shout fire. The devil can't stand a church on fire. When everything we do is driven by the wind of God, then you're going to see when the wind blows, everything changes. Hallelujah. Type it out when the wind blows. When the wind of God blows, everything changes. When the wind of God blew at the beginning, <laughs> when the Holy Ghost, Pastor Todd, hovered over the earth, where there was just nothing but no form or void. It really literally meant chaos. And the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Holy Ghost blew over the earth. All of a sudden, hallelujah, there was life. There was light. There were animals. Hallelujah. When the wind of God blew, that day when Moses was at the Red Sea, all of a sudden the waters parted. When the wind blew, hallelujah, after they got to the other side, it came back together and Pharaoh's army were killed. It was a wind that dried up the waters from the earth after the flood. It was a wind, hallelujah, that brought locusts upon Egypt. It said a wind of God brought them in. Oh, hallelujah. It said a wind of God brought in the quail for the children of Israel to eat. It was a wind of God that brought the wet rain in after three and a half years of drought during the prophet Elijah's time. It was a wind of God, glory to God, that turned a valley of dry bones into a mighty army. Somebody ought to shout praise the Lord. Somebody ought to shout, it's the wind of God. The wind of God changes it. The wind of God changes it. It was the wind of God that blew in on the day of Pentecost and turned a bunch of discouraged, broken-hearted disciples into the greatest warriors this world has ever known. Let me declare, church, the wind is blowing again. I said the wind is blowing again. I said the wind is blowing again. I want somebody to say it. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Then our text tells us many of the disciples were gathered together in prayer. And because of their faith and because of their boldness and their testimony of Jesus Christ, they had been 
persecuted. They had been threatened. And they were commanded. Do not preach in the name of Jesus anymore. But they left rejoicing after being beaten, after being persecuted, and, and rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name's sake. But instead of gathering together and complaining, like many times church people do, and showing off their wounds, look where I got hurt, look where they beat me, look what the devil's done to me. How you been? How you, how you been today? Oh, the devil's, look what he did to me. Look how he's hurt me. Look at all the troubles I've got. Woe is me. They didn't do that, Pastor. You know what they did? They prayed. And here's what they prayed. We need more power. We need more power. We need a double dose of the wind blowing. And the Bible says, hallelujah. The Bible says, they said in their prayer, Lord, look at their threats. Grant to your servants that with all boldness that we may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody shout, the wind is blowing again. Somebody say, the wind is blowing again. Somebody say, I got a second wind. Somebody shout, I've got a second wind. Hallelujah. I've got a refilling. I've got a fresh anointing. I've got a fresh fire. I've got a fresh baptism. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit 25 years ago. Well, let me tell you something. You ought to keep getting baptized in the Spirit. You ought to keep letting the Holy Ghost blow on you. You ought to let it happen to you every day. Then in chapter 5, 12, we went from chapter 2, we went to chapter 4, we're in chapter 5, and look what the apostles are doing now. At the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's force. Now listen, in the fourth chapter, they said, Lord, pour out your spirit and, and do signs and wonders. In the fifth chapter, at the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were wrought among the people. I'm here to tell you, if you let the wind blow, if you get a second wind, you can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. In the name of Jesus, you can cast out devils. You can see miracles take place. I believe this morning, by the Spirit of God, that I'm talking to some people this morning who are tired, you're worn out, and many of you are at the point of exhaustion. You feel like you got the breath knocked out of you. Some of you feel like you're running on empty. <sighs> but listen, you couldn't understand what was happening. But the, you love God, but that Python spirit has been squeezing the literal breath out of you. The Python spirit, it counts on you struggling. It counts on you getting discouraged and fighting. It counts on you to struggle and kick and fight and, and, and to exert energy. And you exhale your breath and he tightens his grip. He tightens his grip. But that devil has been exposed today and that spirit 
has been broken right now, this moment, and right now, God is sending a second wind. Somebody shout, God is sending a second wind. God is sending a second wind. God is sending a fresh wind. You're going to breathe again. And it won't be like spiritual asthma if you, where you have to fight for every breath. Never has the American church, never before has it needed fresh anointing fresh wind than like the Pentecostal church in America today. Hallelujah, right now, we need a second wind from heaven, a fresh baptism, a fresh Holy Ghost and fire. The great need of the church is fresh anointing and fresh fire from heaven. I want you to shout, give me fresh fire. Give me a, a fresh fire, Lord. Give me a second wind, Lord. I believe that God is sending you a second wind right now. Somebody just type out, I receive it. Somebody say, I receive it. Somebody shout, I receive it. Hallelujah. You're receiving it right now. You're not going under, but you're going over. You're not going down, but you're going up. You're not going to be defeated, but you're going to be victorious. Today, we're putting that spirit of Python. Today, we're putting that serpent under our feet where he belongs. Tell somebody, Crush the enemy under your feet. In the name of Jesus, we'll tread on serpents and scorpions. Praise God. Praise God. Right there where you're at, right there, even in the sanctuary right now, I want you to lift your hands and I want you to begin to breathe. I want you to inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Something is breaking right now. The anointing is destroying the yoke right now. There's a fresh anointing coming your way. You're catching a second wind. The very breath of God is coming to you in the name of Jesus. Listen, Sandra, come on up here. It's not a sin to run out of gas. We've all been there. It's not a sin to run out of breath. We've all been there. The sin is believing that you can keep on in your own strength, in your own self-effort, and neglect the presence and the power of God and just keep on trudging along in the strength of your own flesh. That's where the problem is. I don't care who you are. I don't care how spiritual you are or how anointed you are. At some point, sometime, you're going to run out of gas. You're going to run out of breath. You're going to hit the air. And you're going to need a second wind. The good news is, this morning, the same spirit that filled the upper room in chapter 4, the same Holy Spirit, hallelujah, that filled the room, upper room in chapter 2 and the room in chapter 4. The same Holy Spirit that we read about just a moment ago in chapter 5. It's the same Holy Spirit that wants to fill 
the room that you're in right now, lift your hands and say, come Holy Spirit, I need you. Feel me, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, give me a second wind. The Bible declares, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He's the same Holy Spirit that's going to give you a second wind. He's going to give you a fresh start, a new chapter. Just tell him, say, Lord, I'm ready for a new chapter. Say it with me. Type it out. I'm ready for a new chapter. I'm ready for the second wind. I'm ready for a fresh start. I'm ready for a new beginning. And we're going to give you that opportunity right now. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, Jesus Christ is wanting to come in your heart. You're not even in the race if you don't know Jesus. You got to get the first win. Then God will give you the first win and the second win and the third win and the fourth win. But you got to start here. You got to start now. And I want you to pray this prayer with me and ask Jesus to come into your heart. And if you do, I'm telling you, it'll be the greatest thing you ever did in your life. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. I know you died on the cross for me. I know they laid you in the grave. I know on the third day you rose again. You ascended into heaven. You're coming back for your children. Lord, I repent of my sins. Cover me with your blood. I'm ready to be used in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, Jesus Christ came into your heart. That Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit, that wind that we're talking about came part of that package. Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of time. What you need to do right now is to tell somebody. And I want you right now, if you made that decision, you made that commitment, I want you to type on there, I did it. I prayed the prayer. I accepted Jesus. I did it in the name of Jesus. Sandra, come up here and sing something. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Holy Spirit.